Hello everyone and welcome to the Algebra 1 Summer Course. This is going to be Week 6, Graphing Linear Lines, Part 2. We're basically going to be reviewing everything we talked about last time. We're talking about y equals mx plus b, slope and y-intercept, and then we're going to introduce the topics of parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and writing the equation of a line yourself. So as a quick review from last time, if we, for instance, have the equation y equals 2x plus 5, Remember that this is in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and remember what the slope means. The slope is saying the rise over the run. So in this example, m is clearly equal to 2, which means the slope is 2, which means as you're writing the slope, you're going to be going rise over run, so up to right 1. Or for instance, you could say down, you could say down two and left one if you want to go the other way. And this is review from last week and we're going to be actually plotting this. Now the plus five, that's called the y-intercept, that's our b, it's called the y-intercept. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start at the point zero comma five. So in other words, five tick marks up, one, two, three, four, five, this point right here. And then every point after that, I got to go up to right one or down to left one. So for instance, up to left one, that's this point right here. And then you can't go anymore because you've reached the end of the graph. So then you got to go the other way, down to left one right there. And how many times should you do this? I like to do it until I can draw a straight line or until I reach the end of the graph. So another down to left one, down to left one, down to left one, down to left one, there we go. And then if I want to draw the line here, I'm just gonna draw it like this, perfect. And then I like to put the arrows on the end because the line goes on forever, even off the graph. And so that's just a reminder of how we graph these lines. Any questions? Okay, so then now we're gonna do the examples y equals negative two-thirds x. You'll notice there's no b this time. In other words, b is equal to zero, and that's perfectly fine. That means we're going to start at zero. I already know one point is at the origin, zero comma zero. Now for this slope, m equals negative two-thirds. Remember what this means. This is going to be down to right three. You don't want to say down two left three because that's like a double negative. You, that's like negative two over negative three. That's not what you want. Just down two right three, or if you prefer, you can say up two left three. That would work as well, but they can't both be negative. They can't both be down and left together. So what do we have here? It looks like down two right three gets us that point right there. Another down two right three gives us right there. And then I'm going to go up to left three the other way. So up to left three, that point right there. And another up to left three, that point right there. And then if I want to connect these lines, it will look like that. And there we go. There is our function. Any questions on that one? Okay, good. So. As we can see, we don't even need the y-intercept. Next one, why don't you try this one on your own? y equals 1 fourth x minus 3. Go ahead and pause the video and unpause it when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, you can unpause the video. The answer is, if we say the slope is 1 fourth, that means that we're going to be going up 1 and to the right by 4. And since b is negative 3, we're going to start at negative 3. So negative three, that's down here, one, two, three. And then up one, right four. Up one, one, two, three, four, that point right there. And then you could also do down one, left four. That would work as well. Down one, left four, one, two, three, four. And then again, we just draw a line connecting the dots. Beautiful. You should have something that looks like this. Any questions on that one? So now we're going to review on how to find the slope if you're just given two coordinate points. 
And that, of course, uses our favorite formula from Algebra 1. And I'm not kidding when I say this. This is like the number one most popular equation from Algebra 1. It's m, the slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you remember last week, we even said that if you want to, you can write this as well. You can say y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2. This works as well. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this one because I like to do the same thing every time. And I like using y2 minus y1 because this is what you're going to learn in class. So for instance, if I want to find the slope here for number one, m equals, so one is x1, two is y1, four is x2, 11 is y2. And so it's going to be 11 minus two over four minus one. And that's going to be 11 minus two, nine, divided by four minus one is three, nine divided by three, Looks like you've got a slope of three. And that's it for how to find the slope. Any questions there? Okay, then great. Now, why don't you do the next one on your own? Number two, find the slope between the points three, nine and five, negative one. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, you can unpause your video. Now, would someone like to tell me how we find the slope? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to say, m equals y2 minus y1, so we're talking x1 is 3, y1 is 9, x2 is 5, and y2 is negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1 minus 9 divided by 5 minus 3. That's going to be negative 10 divided by 2, and so we got negative 5 as our slope. Any questions? Yes. Yes. How is it negative if, but how is it negative 10 if it's, because I did 9 minus, and then like I put in parentheses like a negative um, 1. Yep. But so then, it sounds, go ahead. Because like a negative and a negative makes a positive. Yes, so it sounds like to me you did uh, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, which should work. You should still get the f same final answer. Yeah. Did you get negative 5? I got positive 5. You got positive 5? Well, what's in your denominator? Do you have 5 minus 3 or 3 minus 5? 5 minus 3. Yeah, there's your problem. Basically, you did this. You did y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. See how you mix uh, and match there? Yeah. Yep. So it's funny because okay. if you did, for instance, this version where the 1 is goes first, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. If you put the 2 first, again, perfectly fine. If you mix and match, you'll get the, the negative answer. Got it. Yep. Okay. Now let's move on to number th uh, three. Basically, now what we're going to do is, and I forget if we did this last week or not, but we're definitely going to do it now. We're going to write the equation of the whole line that passes through these points, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about y equals mx plus b. Now the first thing you should do is find m, the slope. Of course, we know how to do that. m is going to be y2 minus y1, so 4 minus 1, divided by x2 minus x1, 2 minus 1. We're going to get 3 over 1, and that's 3. So there, we got our slope. Now let me plug into the formula we have so far. We have y equals 3x plus b. Now we just need to solve for b. The way you do that is you can choose the point you want to plug in for x and y. You can either choose 1 and 1, or you can choose 2 and 4. I think 1 and 1 are easier, and we're going to plug in 1 for x and 1 for y. So that means it's going to be 1 equals 3 times 1 plus b. And now to solve for b, I just have to subtract 3 from both sides. It looks like b is going to equal negative 2. And so then the final answer will be y equals 3x minus 2. And by the way, if you chose to do 2 comma 4, 2 is your x, 4 is your y, you would get the exact same answer. You would get b equals negative 2. Any questions on that one? I have a different way of doing it. Let's hear it. Um, so it's, um, you do y, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Mm -hmm. And do you know what that's called, by the way? Point slope form. Yeah, point slope form. 
Now, if you can do it both ways, then you're like set because I'll tell you this, when you get to calculus one day, maybe you don't even get to calculus, but for those of you who eventually will take calculus, point slope form is the more popular form. And I almost never see the other form. Y equals MX plus B, this is called slope intercept form. And what I'd recommend is I'd recommend knowing both because it just makes you a stronger student in math and it's going to make you more prepared for tests and the SAT and for calculus and, and basically everything. If you know all the formulas, then there's nothing that's going to trip you up. Of course, there's a lot of formulas in math, right? So we also like to pick and choose what we need to know. So in other words, yes, if you do point slope form, you'll get the exact same answer. Let me prove why. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. In this case, we're saying m is still 3, we're saying x1 is 1, and we're saying y1 is also 1. That's because we had the coordinate point 1 comma 1, remember? So now what I'm saying is y minus 1 equals m is 3 times x minus 1. And obviously this looks different than y equals 3x minus 2, but hold on, let me finish. Distribute the 3 to both, because we talked about how to distribute. It's going to be 3x minus 3. On the left we still have y minus 1. If you add 1 to both sides and combine like terms, we will get y equals 3x minus 2. It's the exact same thing. So you can do either one you prefer. Typically students in Algebra 1 prefer y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. But if you prefer point slope form, then by all means you can do that on the homework. Okay, now we're going to move on to number four. Why don't you try number four on your own? We need the equation of the line that passes through zero, zero, and two comma negative one. You can unpause the video. Would anyone like to tell me how you solve this? So here's what we're gonna do. First, you need to find m. So m is going to be y2, negative one, minus y1, zero divided by 2 minus 0, that's going to be negative 1 over 2, so negative 1 half. And that really can't simplify more than that. So now what we got to do, and this is going to be annoying, but the good news is you can just pick the point 0, 0 for x and y. That's going to be really easy, because that means when you say y equals mx plus b, you're going to say 0 equals negative 1 half times 0 plus b. And remember, anything times 0 is 0, so you really got 0 equals 0 plus b. In other words, does b equal 0? The answer is yes. So then your final answer should be y equals negative 1 half x plus 0. But you don't even have to write the plus 0. This is perfectly fine. Any questions on number 4? Okay, and then once again, number 5, I would like you to try it on your own. This one should be, let's see, should be easier. You can unpause the video, here's the solution. Would anyone from the audience like to tell me how to solve this? So first thing we're gonna do, find m. m equals 15 minus three divided by 14 minus eight. That's gonna be 12 over six, which is two. Looks like we got a slope of two. Now these points, neither of them are friendly, but eight and three is a lot better. So in other words, when I say y equals 2x plus b, and I plug in x and y, I'm going to say 3 equals 2 times 8 plus b. 2 times 8 is 16, so 3 equals 16 plus b. Then we got to subtract 16 from both sides. Looks like b is going to equal negative 13, and there's our answer. y equals 2x minus 13. Any questions on that one? Okay, so then now we're going to go on to the next couple. Next couple will be different. You'll see why in a second. Number six, write the equation of a line with a slope of three and a y-intercept of two. Any ideas on how I'm going to do that? So, I mean, you can just say it. <laughs> I see you're shaking your head. Point so. You don't even need point slope form, and let me tell you why. You don't have a point. Oh, 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 oh. You have to do it in slope intercept because it just tells you what it is. So it would just be, um, it would just be, uh, three x, um, minus two. 
Exactly, easier than we thought it'd be. And that's because the slope is 3, in other words, m is 3. And I tell you the y-intercept, b is negative 2. And so not all problems are as hard as the ones we were doing before. Sometimes they basically give you everything. But what's most important is you know the terminology, you know what to plug in, you know what we're doing. Okay, number 7. This is one where you can use point-slope form. Write the equation of a line with a slope of negative 4 and passes through the point 0, 1. Do we have an idea for this one? You don't even have to do, um, it would just be negative 4x, um, plus 1. And why do you say that? Because, um, I learned that whenever, um, whenever, whenever x equals 0, um, that's like the y-intercept. Exactly. So in other words, if you think about this point on a graph, let me just draw it real quick. The point zero one, right here, that is the y-intercept. In other words, b is 1. You don't even need to do point-slope form. Of course, you can. If you do point-slope form, you get y minus 1 equals slope is negative 4, so negative 4 times x minus 0. And if you simplify this, I mean x minus 0, the 0 goes away, basically. And so then add 1 to both sides. Looks like y equals negative 4x plus 1. You're exactly right. Very good. And now we got one more here, number 8. This one I want you to... Actually, we got two more. Okay, these next two I want you to try on your own. First, number 8, pause the video, and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay, here's the solution. First, do we have any volunteers? Okay, so here's what I'm going to say y, you can either do y equals mx plus b, or you can do y minus y1. I'll do y equals mx plus b for today. So y equals one third x plus b, and then we're saying x is two and y is five. So I'll plug that in right here. So y is five and x is two. Now you'll notice here we're going to have a fraction. Luckily, I hope we know how to do fractions because that was in a previous lesson on multiplying and adding fractions. So if we want to, basically we need to subtract two-thirds from both sides. B is going to equal five minus two-thirds. If you want to subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. And the common denominator here is three, so you're, need, you're going to have to multiply the five by three divided by three, which gives us 15 thirds minus two-thirds for a final answer of b equals 13 thirds. And basically there's our answer. y equals 1 third x plus 13 thirds. Hopefully you got that. If not, I'm guessing the fraction confused you. So, number nine, same idea. We're gonna do it on our own. And then unpause the video when you're ready. y equals x plus one. Close, but no cigar. I have a feeling you plugged in 1 for m instead of 0. In other words, m here should be 0, which means we have y equals 0x plus b, and plugging in the point, 4 equals 0 times 3 plus b. 0 times 3 is still 0. 4 equals 0 plus b. Looks like b equals 4. So then as our final equation, you get y equals 0x plus 4. In other words, y equals 4. And that's the answer. And you'll notice, a slope of 0, what does that look like? It looks like a horizontal line. Let me show you what that looks like. It's a horizontal line, which I'll draw in red. And the height is 4. So 1, 2, 3, it's at 4 high. That's what y equals 4 looks like. Any questions? Okay. Now we're finally on to, I don't know if the stuff before was new or not, I honestly forget, but this stuff, parallel and perpendicular lines, this is gonna definitely be new for this week. How can you tell if lines are parallel? Obviously, you just look at these lines and they look parallel. Oh, and if you don't know what parallel lines are, it means that they will never intersect with each other. You look at these two red lines right here, they're never going to intersect, they're never going to touch each other. They're parallel. But how do I know if they're parallel or not? Well, let's write the equation of both lines and let's find out. So for instance, this first red line 
looks like it has a slope of one because it goes up one, right one. So slope of one, m equals one, and it looks like the y-intercept is at two, so b equals two. So the top one has an equation of y equals one x plus two. I'll write that over here because it's hard to read in the grid marks. y equals one x plus two. Now for the other one, looks like it has the same slope, m equals one, and a y-intercept at negative two down here. And so what I would say, y equals one x minus two, and again, I'll write it right underneath here, y equals one x minus two. So how can we tell if lines are parallel? It's simple. See these slopes right here, one x and one x? The slopes have to be the same. If you wanna be perpendicular, the slopes have to be the same. That's the secret. So once you figure out that the slopes are the same, you know they're parallel. And if, you, if they tell you they're parallel, it means they both have the same slope. Any questions? Okay. So then now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some examples. Number one, write the equation of the line parallel to y equals two x minus four, but has a y-intercept of three. I'm gonna be doing these, at least the first one, Basically what you need to do is you look at y equals 2x minus 4 and what's most important is the slope m equals 2 as a matter of fact that minus 4 that y-intercept I don't even care about why not because I'm changing the y-intercept I want the y-intercept to be 3 b equals 3 so in other words you take this equation you find the slope from it and then you toss it in the trash y equals 2x minus 4 is now useless to us because all we needed was the slope we're good and then the answer is with m equals two and b equals three, the answer is y equals two x plus three. And if you're wondering, how do I know this, these are parallel? They have the same slope, they're both two x. Any questions on number one? Okay, then why don't we try number two on your own? I think I got it. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, three bits, three bits x, plus zero, or just y equals um, three-fifths x. You're exactly right. So what did you do? You saw the three-fifths here, you stole it, or at least borrowed it, we never steal. And then you said that's parallel slope, and then the y-intercept is zero, so all you need to do is, we'll add zero, and you get ooh, this right here, so perfect. Okay, so next number three, I'm gonna be doing this one. We're gonna be doing the, basically the same thing, but this time I have to pass through the point two comma five. Again, the first thing I need to do is I need to steal the slope. The slope is not x, the slope is one, m equals one. Now, if I wanna pass to the point two five, that means x is two and y is five. So when I say y equals mx plus b, I'm saying five equals one times two plus b. So that means five equals two plus b, and then subtract two, three equals b. So then my final answer is y equals one x plus three, and technically you don't even need to say one x, you can just say x, that's the same thing, and it looks nicer. So there's our answer, y equals x plus three. Any questions on that one? Okay, then why don't we try number four on your own? Same idea. Okay, you can unpause your video. Here's the explanation. What I'm gonna say is, first thing you need to recognize, this slope six x, m is six. Then we've got the point x is six and y is 12. So that's what I'm gonna plug in to y equals mx plus b. I get 12 equals six times another six plus b. Six times six is 36 plus b. Subtract 36 from both sides, What's 12 minus 36? That's gonna be negative 14, or is it 24? Probably 20, yeah, it's 24. Can't even do mental math. Negative 24. So that means y, oh, and that's b, by the way. b is negative 24. So then y equals six x minus 24. And there's our answer. Any questions on that one? Okay. Now the only other topic we need to introduce today is perpendicular lines. Now again, we're gonna look at these two lines right here and we're gonna figure out what perpendicular means. 
So the first line I'll say is this one right here, the shallow one, or the positive slope one. Looks like you have a y-intercept at two, so b equals two, and the slope is, looks like we're going up one to the right two. Up one, right two, that is a slope of one half because it's rise over run. So then that means the equation for the top one is y equals one half x plus two. Now for the other one, we can't exactly see where the y-intercept is, but I'm guessing it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It looks like b is 7. And then the slope, it is negative because it's going down. I'm going to pick this point right here and then count so it looks like it goes down 1, 2, right 1. So it goes down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1 means negative 2 over 1, or you could just say negative 2. So the equation of the other line is y equals negative 2x plus 7. Now if you want to know if lines are perpendicular or not, forget about the y-intercept. The y-intercept does not matter. What matters is the slopes. Compare these slopes. One slope is 1 half, the other slope is negative 2. What is the relationship between these two slopes? Does anyone know? These two slopes, we like to say in math, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. They have opposite reciprocal slopes. What does opposite mean? It means one's negative, one's positive. What does reciprocal mean? And I, I want to clean up my spelling. Reciprocal is, that's an O there. So anyways, Opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite means one's negative, one's positive. Reciprocal means it's one over the other. It's like a fraction. And just so you know, let me just give a couple quick examples. If, for instance, I want the opposite reciprocal of th five thirds, that's going to be negative three fifths. If I have a slope of 10, then the opposite reciprocal is negative one over 10. So this is what opposite reciprocal slopes look like. That's what perpendicular is going to mean. So with that, let's look at the examples. Number one, what is, and notice, all three of these are just the slope. I just want the slope. I don't want the equation of the line yet. Y equals 2x plus 1, and I want a perpendicular slope. So it looks like m equals 2 is the slope. If I want to turn that into the opposite reciprocal, it's going to be negative one half. That's how we do opposite reciprocal. So then why don't you try number two and number three on your own? Pause the video. You can do both of these at once. When we review, I'll go over both. Okay, and does anyone have an answer? So here's what I'm going to say. Um, if we have a slope of m equals negative one six and we want the opposite reciprocal, then that is going to be positive 6 over 1, which is just 6. So the slope for number 2 is 6. And then for number 3, same idea. Our slope there, careful, it's negative 1. It's not negative x. Slope cannot have x in it. It's just the thing in front of the x. And now what's the opposite reciprocal of negative 1? Does anyone know? It's going to be, go ahead. 1 positive one over one, which is still just one. So the slope is one. That one was kind of tricky. Any questions? Okay, then, and now for the very last page, what we're gonna be doing, just two more times, we're gonna be writing the equation of the line that passes through the point, in this case, one, zero. It's perpendicular. So for number four, again, my slope is three, because just look at this line. And if we want opposite reciprocal for perpendicular, the slope is going to be negative one-third. So that means we have y equals negative one-third x plus b, and now I need to plug in the point x is one and y is zero. So zero equals negative one-third times one plus b. Remember, anything times one is the same thing. So in other words, zero equals negative one-third plus b. Add one-third to both sides. Looks like b equals positive one-third. So we have everything I need to write the equation of the line. 
it's y equals negative one-third x plus one-third, and there we go. Any questions on that one? Okay, good. And then finally, last one, number five, go ahead and try this one on your own. A lot of par audience participation today. I love it. I got it. Okay, let's hear it. I got y equals uh, 2x plus 10. And how did you get that? Um, I did points, or at first, um, I did the opposite reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is, mm, which is 2. Yep, and positive then, 2. Yeah, and then I did point slope form, so I did y minus 2 equals 2 times x plus 4. Yeah, so just real quick to explain that. Basically, it's y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And you use the point right here. You'll notice the negative 4 for x. Double negative makes it positive. That's why it's x plus 4. But you can continue. And then um, I did y um, minus 2 and then equals 2x plus 8. Yep, you and distributed then, the 2. Yeah, and then I brought down the 2 on both sides, so I made it, so then 8 plus 2 is 10. So then y equals 2x plus 10. You got it, perfect. Okay, any questions on that last one? Okay, great. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you next week. There's only two weeks left until the course is over, and that's going to take us to basically the beginning of August. You probably then have like another month until school starts, but you're going to have a much better understanding of algebra when you take it in the fall. So again, thank you all for joining me. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.